Slack confuses me. I'm yeah. just, I'm a, I'm gonna throw it out there, Thank man. You. Everyone's Thank like, you. oh, it's in the. Slack. I'm like, I don't know what's happening in I there. Know. It just seems like people talking. I mean, and you can't be one of the old people. I, you can't be. It's confusing. Dan, a lot I think of Dan channels. understands Slack. Dan, I'm gonna uh, tell you right now. Yeah. So if Dan understands oh, Slack, yeah. you don't got a leg to stand on. I'm gonna tell you this. So I, wait. Thank you. Yeah. That was that was a They're backhanded right, compliment. It's true. <laughs> Even Dan. <laughs> No, my thing is this. There are certain things in life that I can't explain it. I just have a blind spot, right? I went to college. I was a, a dual degree management marketing, and then I got my MBA. Accounting is something I just couldn't fucking get. I got it's the only class like I got like a C in because I was just like, I don't know. I'm guessing. Is this enough? That's it, right? Um, Slack is one of them. Crypto is one of them. Mm. Like these are the things we're like. This I is just, just you aging on no. intellectual curiosities where no, you're just like. No, it's not that because it's it's been like that my entire life. The stock market, I just don't fucking get it. Like I and there's a part of me where like, well, I can either sit here and bash my head and try to get it, or I can just accept I wasn't made to be great at everything. Some things are like, ah, you know, not let it slide. I'm so, like that way with health insurance and personal taxes. It's just like I won't pay it. <laughs> It's I mean, not, Slack is not that confusing. It is, it's, it's just, very it's just, easy. it's like it's all of everything we're messenger. trying to do. It's chat just room. different categories. It's different. It's chat rooms for different categories. I'm proud of you, Mike. Uh, David, how, where and how do you Too feel colorful. old technologically as the world passes us by as a mean sounds like your grandfather? <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how to value NFTs. I just can't, I can't wrap my arm around it. I understand collecting baseball cards. I don't understand how you'd want something that is in your digital wallet that you can't live with and enjoy every day. That's I just a, don't get that. That's funny that you should say that as someone whose Marlins team was owned by an art owner who knew how to find value in things that others might not have seen value in. Well, that's the big, that's the, right. Art, I love art, you know that. Art is what you live with. You look at it every day, it's on your wall. NFTs have a value that is based on nothing I can understand. I don't, I, and that like the stock market, I mean, you can figure out how to value things. You can look at PE ratios. You can look at EBITDA. You can look at revenue. You can think about sort of what sector they're in. I can't figure out how to ever value NFTs. Well, is, isn't that because it's new and I don't think anyone really knows how to value them other than the people who are making the killing right now by telling everybody how the valuable it is? perceived experts, right. I think, isn't that what we do for a living? Yeah. We're well, perceived I mean, experts. Well, I mean, we've been doing this for a while. I wonder what <laughs> NFTs are going to be like 20 years from now. Right? Is will they be? That's my number one thing about them. Is is this thing gonna last? What well, people laugh? Oh, you have your money in dollars. <laughs> I've gotten Bitcoin. Like, how do I? Know? I know the ado the dollar will be here. I don't know that Bitcoin will be yeah. here ten years from now. There's a risk, but the whole idea is is that you're getting in at the ground floor. Like in twenty years, you're getting in when NFTs started. So ideally. I mean, if you buy it now, and if it's still here in 10 years, you will have made a lot of money. It's the too late if you're getting it now. The opening salvo of every grift is you're getting in on the ground floor. Put it on the poll, Chris Cody. Is the opening salvo of every grift you're getting in on the ground floor? <laughs> Obi Toppin had a good game last night. That top shot going through the year. Yeah. What did, uh, you, what did you pay for that? Uh, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> David, uh, there's a lot of local news, and we have you on the local hour, and we'll, we'll give our thoughts on everything that happened locally. But there are some big sports business news associated with the um, local teams down here. Uh, number one being the Tyreek Hill acquisition or show – uh, probably aired yesterday and not really going into more detail about uh, the uh, the guilty plea that um, that Tyreek Hill put in back in 2014, his history of domestic violence. He, uh, in recent years, has cleaned up his image some, so much so that people like us omitted some of the off-the-field stuff. What do you make of the decision the Miami Dolphins made here in making Tyreek Hill the highest-paid wide receiver in the league and all the baggage that comes with it? I was under the impression that the NFL was a quarterback-driven league. And it's interesting that the Dolphins are choosing to go the other way, where they're going, they're in bed with Tua, who is likely not a franchise quarterback, but they're surrounding him with the highest-paid offensive lineman, the highest-paid wide receiver, thinking that that can make up for it. And I think that the last 10 years has probably shown that they're making a mistake and that they're not going to be a team that can win with Tua quarterback, no matter what weapons he has. But it's also just showing you that Stephen Ross – continues to be so desperate to win back from the red carpet all the way through all of the money he's spent 
He certainly does spend money, but it is not translated to wins. And I don't think that the Dolphins are better today with Tyree Kill because they still have Tua. And by the way, Mike, you can't choose to be a Dolphins fan now, right? Wait a minute, That'd wait a minute. Totally you, can't, you, can't, you, you can't say, you, you can't better say today. they've got Tyreek Hill and they're not better today. You can't you can't say that. And I'm all, judging it by winning rings. But he was I don't think they're closer to winning a ring with Tyreek Hill. Well, he's than talking they were my language. Okay, but uh we can we can do this, but you are making you're saying what proof do you have when you say this is the wrong move? You're saying last ten years prove. I'm saying that, it, in my opinion, anecdotally, that having a franchise quarterback is more important than having a franchise wide receiver. I know, but Garoppolo almost, you know, was six minutes from winning the Super Bowl in this system, uh, and they they hit him all year. Yes. Okay, so, but I he mean... He didn't win, though. I know, okay, but it's... Right. Okay. Wrong. The elite quarterback no, but that's won. everything. Right. Okay. No, but that's I mean, everything, yes. Dan. But Either you win or you lose, and there's only one winner. And, and Stephen Ross is not doing this for any other reason. Someone actually asked me on Nothing Personal today whether or not Stephen Ross is doing this so people forget about the Brian Flores situation. And I don't think he's doing it for that reason at all. He literally thinks this is his best chance to win a ring, and that is what I debate. David, I understand what you're saying about Tua, but getting Tariq Hill makes them better from this standpoint. It could help attract a better quarterback if Tua is not good. And what we've learned is the way to attract a good quarterback is by giving him the biggest piece of your cap. <laughs> David, uh, it's funny. We, we fall into some bad habits around here because for as woke as we claim to be, there's always learning to be done. And yesterday, because the news dropped... As we were leaving, and I know this sounds like excuse making, but we reacted in real time by reflex to the news and the stunning news that the Dolphins had acquired a game breaker. And in discussing it for 20 minutes on the spot, we neglected to talk about his past as a show that has done some moralizing recently on Deshaun Watson's case. To be fair, Witty did mention it. He said, I don't yeah, want to say I'm excited as a Dolphins fan because of Tyreek Hill's past. But we, gla we glanced over it right. because these details on these cases are horrifying. And I'm right. always talking around here about is it the crime or is it the criminal? Like, is it the position? Uh, is it the level of fame or is it the crime? There are any number of guys. Joe Mixon, you may have forgotten already. It gets erased in time. Mm -hmm. The victims get erased in time. Joe Mixon is not something you might associate with that anymore, even though his draft stock suffered because of that. Tyree Kill was a fifth-round pick. That speed, he's sprinter speed. How is that a fifth-round pick? It's because it because the details. And, and then there was more. And so we skipped over that to get to that transaction. And our apologies for bad habits dying hard, because around here for a long time, we have skipped over, well, d domestic abuse is in this person's past, and we don't have a moral conundrum in our locker room because sports is always going to choose... Uh, not necessarily the immoral path, but the one that's cleanest to better business and better value. And, and it should be noted that uh, some of the stuff is not conjecture. There, there was a guilty plea, and I understand certain circumstances a, a, a plea bargain is made where there is a guilty plea. And the NFL didn't punish him, right? And it was, well, that was a separate incident. I'm talking about the 2014. The NFL did uh, chose to not suspend him. They found that he did not violate their personal conduct policy, stemming from an incident that resulted in a broken arm to a toddler. David, what I'm is sorry, but are you trying to say that you are not representative of fans around this country? That you want to be different than they are because you want to take into account and have a moral compass before you decide who you're going to cheer for and what team you're going to cheer for? This is what we've been talking about recently here when it comes to uh, Mike Schur's book, How to Be Perfect. The moral conundrums that, that book ruined me. The, the, the moral conundrums that you have walking to your driveway, well, I don't rate them. the decision fatigue you have on the number of conflicts that you can have. Greg Norman is now still doing the Mickelson the stuff with Saudi Arabia. And Greg Norman is a friend of the show. And you're like, look, you can't you can't be like winking at, at the bone sawing of a journalist and being like, well, but it's good for our business and leverage over here. The moral decisions around here, uh, we've weirdly been blessedly free of somehow. And it feels like they're weightier now that this stuff can't be ignored once you start giving voices to the victims, once you start giving humanity to the victims. But you've built a career on trying to bring up these human rights abuses and these issues. Part of your whole shtick, and I don't mean that in a pejorative way, is the background, your family background, et cetera. 
but yeah, you recognize that the business that you're trying to grow, there are certain things you have to talk about. There's certain things that you have to give your audience in order to drive sponsorship numbers, in order to keep the money flowing in for you and the rest of your show. Oh, but no, container. but this was reflex. What we reacted to yesterday is the excitement of sports. What we react, this you were fans. We became, because it happened, no, news never happens during our show. So bec and, and Dolphin News, God almighty, we've been starved for that for 20 years as a show trying to. Like make Miami sports matter. Positive Dolphin news. Oh yeah, yeah well we they gave us some content. God bless them. <laughs> they had such great embarrassments and shames that they you know they swallow Saban, they swallow Parcells. Of course, an octogenarian billionaire who has always succeeded at everything. David, who right now is putting an F one track and taking the fines as the people in the neighborhood do not want their sewage disrupted. And he's like, bleep off! I'll take the forty five thousand dollar fine. I run this neighborhood. You guys don't want me here. I don't do anything for this neighborhood for but take from it. I succeed at life. I'm a desperate owner. I've ruined everything Hyzenga gave me. I'm at the end of life and people have been laughing at me for 20 years. I've tried to get Sean Payton. I tried to get Tom Brady. I tried to get Jim Harbaugh. I'm a failure. I fail. I fail. Bleep it. Give all the draft picks away. I don't care. I, I, give me anybody. Get me a guy who helps me win this year right now. And your reaction was positive for 20 minutes. That's the whole point. <laughs> it us. worked. But that's but what I'm saying is the other day, Jessica said the other day, uh, being a sports fan is hard. And somebody made fun of the idea that during wartime, we're talking about being a sports fan is hard. I didn't say it was like the hardest thing in the world. Yes, you did. So yes, you did. Ridiculous. I remember. So you ridiculous like, to oh compare my. things that are not the same at you, all. You, you ranked it a Your little words, bit above yeah. like it's the, being, being, a, a being a sports fan is the hardest thing that's ever happened to me <laughs> in my life. It's ever. so hard. It I get hard. out of bed and I think, God damn it, I have to be a sports fan today. <laughs> that is what I if said. If you guys would listen to the last the last 10 minutes of today's Nothing Personal was about fans because Tom Ricketts is flying across the pond to try to convince people of Chelsea, the Chelsea supporters, that it's not his dad. His dad may have been racist, but it's not his dad who's involved in the bid for Chelsea, et cetera. And I gave a seven minute segment that fans in general are not considered in any way by owners or presidents or GMs ever, but they all pretend. We pretend because that's the, what, when you win a title, what's the first thing when the owner gets the trophy? The first thing the owner says, no matter what the trophy is, I just want to thank the great fans of blank team. It's always <laughs> the first thing because you're told to say that, it is. but not one owner actually thinks that. Fans are never considered in labor disagreements or who's going to buy a team or sell a team. So you say it's hard to be a fan because you're not, you, the ups, the downs, the fact that you're not cared about. But here's the sad truth. Stephen Ross did not think for one second what Dan Lebitard's reaction would be to acquiring Tyreek Hill. It did not matter to him in the least. He was told by his football people that tomorrow we will be better, better equipped to win a ring than we were today. David, I want to touch on something that you mentioned because I, I had it thrown in my face I'm not even a fan of the Dolphins, and I had the Tyreek Hill thing thrown in my face because I'm in the market. But your fandom's open, right? Yeah, well, it, it is. is. It is. But you made, a, you made a big public show, yeah, though, no, that's of, the, of I'm your uncomfortable pain, with right. that. Of uh, your pain. Yeah, I'm uncomfortable with people saying I'm trying to get attention for fandom. I, I, I find it an interesting case study, too, in trying to find a team by moralizing, and then one of the teams <laughs> that you're looking at all of a sudden acquires a, a problematic player. In Tyree the Jets Hill. didn't get him. I mean, yeah, moralizing with sports, professional sports in particular, uh, seems to be an impossible mission. I am looking at the Chargers, though. They haven't had an arrest in you five should years. Be. Yeah. <laughs> a spit take. Yo, I got a spit take. There should be a sound effect for that. That's, that's our first ever spit take. Yes. Uh, but uh, I, I am looking at fandom a little bit differently, and it's, it's going to be a lot more harder than I even imagined in, in trying to turn away. I, Joe Posnanski on, on the podcast with Mike Schur uh, also was a Browns fan and is also leaving his fandom behind because of this particular situation. And I do think it's important to highlight that even though both situations are bad, Tyree Kill, Deshaun Watson, they are different. They are different. And you need to apply your own moralities and how you feel about things case by case, I feel. And uh, for Posnanski, for me, I think that the Deshaun Watson thing was a bridge too far. 
David, you say they're, you're, you're saying they're different, though, Mike, and I don't want to even compare them. But what Tyreek well, they are Hill, different. But Tyreek Hill, Tyreek Hill's. I, we were talking about this last week. The nuance of difference in degrees between violent crimes and cri- crimes that we don't view as violent. Because I mean, there, there's a sliding scale on crimes. There's a sliding scale on punishment. What do you do when there's a guilty plea, but the NFL decided to not suspend somebody? Well, what do, what you, do, do you do when they suspend Deshaun Watson when there weren't even criminal charges? There, There's all sorts of nuance that you have to apply here, and it, it just makes me revisit fandom as a whole. I know there's a book coming out that I'm very hopeful tells me what to think with regards to how do I go about rooting professional sports. I'm having a huge internal struggle right now. With fandom in general, David, I, it's a little different for you because you worked in it. But I'm curious if you've had this kind of tug of war going inside of you at times. I grew up in a household where I wasn't allowed to eat uh, Nestle's Crunch Bars, and I wasn't allowed to have Nestle's hot chocolate. There was a boycott. Now, this you want to talk about old, Dan? This will make me as old. There was a Nestle's boycott back in the '70s because what the group, what the company would do is they would go to third world countries and they would convince people that the water was bad and that in order to feed their children, they couldn't breastfeed their children because of the water and the milk and everything was bad. So they had to buy Nestle's formula and, and bottle feed the kids. So I wasn't allowed to have Nestle's. I mean, are you looking at me because uh, you think I'm wrong? No, I didn't. I never heard this before. Which is diabolical to tell people you can't breastfeed. You have to buy our stuff. It's that's so. By the way, hello Sackler family. Hello tobacco. <laughs> I mean, this is not exactly groundbreaking news that companies are manipulating consumers in order to increase profit, and then public companies are doing it so that people buy their shares and the shares go up. This is not exactly new ground. Uh, you Mike, okay, I mean, I, yeah, he's. I think he's okay. <laughs> just need. I need a moment. I'm not sure that answered my question, but we move on. So yeah, no, yeah. no, I, no. Yeah. So my point is that we all have these moral decisions we make every day. Can you go through life and look at everything that you consume and do the research and make sure that those companies represent the values and, the, and that you hold dear? It's impossible to do. You are doing things right now. You don't know the first thing about the company that makes your microphone or your earphones. You don't know what Apple does. By the way, you don't know what Apple does. You don't want to hear what Nike does because you want to wear Nike. So you make decisions based on when it's enough for you, when it's gone too far. And sports fans, I have found over two decades, their moral compass is lower than almost any other consumer sector because they so badly want the emotional attachment to a team and the joy that comes with winning. It's feel good for them. Thank you for saying that, David, because Dan and Mike, you guys think too much. Like there's plenty to think about in life when you wake up every single morning, your family, your job, your health, the war, all kinds okay. of stuff. I That's mean, fine. seriously, okay. you get to rekill, you no, want to cheer, look, cheer. Okay? okay, sports can be the escape, okay, but this stuff keeps spilling over into sports. And Mike, I'd ask you this because I'd like a clarification on it. When we're comparing what's different between Deshaun Watson and Tyreek Hill, a lot of people at the time, now keep in mind, this was baked in and the years and the time does end up mattering in how some of these victims get erased over time. The details are bad. The details are broken toddler's arm. The details are pregnant girlfriend. Uh, the, and, and the details of a violent crime without video, if we saw it, we might think of Tyreek Hill the way that we think of Ray Rice because we saw it. So Right, but there, there, there is sports washing. There is time. There is public atonement. Look, we had Brandon Marshall on. Brandon Marshall's still with his wife. They had a very ugly incident. Uh, Tyreek Hill stayed with people in his family that accuse him of of domestic violence there there are stop uh, there are off ramps on the Tyree Kill situation and say the Deshaun Watson situation they are not the same thing and I, I think that there's a lot that goes into when you're trying to moralize it is exhausting having read Mike Schur's book having had the experience of reading it and saying man I, I'm glad he's trying his best but this seems exhausting for me, with the Cleveland Browns, presently, bridge too far for me to do. Uh, Tyree Kill, I, 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 in good judgment, it obviously, uh, if I were a Dolphin fan, I'd be really bothered by it. But it is different. It is different. It happened years ago. He has tried to make do through works in the community as his statement thanking Kansas City was very quick to highlight. 
knowing that he's coming to a new place, and with that, it sparks a whole new conversation. But you're not talking about the crimes. You're talking about the punishments, the, the, the times. Well, I'm talking about both because there hasn't actually been a punishment for Deshaun Watson, mm -hmm. and I made a reaction based on the crime. There's new. It's a complicated thing to discuss. It, it's what it's exactly what David was talking about. It's the moral conundrum that we live every day. We talked about this on Metal Larkers. The idea that you can be angry at China's record on human rights, but look around your house. How much shit is made in China? Uh, how many things that we you know would never do away with? Right. Think about it right now. I'm looking around the room. Three MacBooks. I know all three of us. Everyone here, other than Roy, has an iPhone. It, we are complicit. Right. <laughs> we yeah, are co you guys, he's rooting for the underdog, Google. <laughs> we, <laughs> the worst. <laughs> we, we are complicit every single day, and we don't do that moralizing. If we did, though, it would be cognitive dissonance. You would go crazy, Mike, if you really took a fine-tooth comb to your entire life and said anything that has any sort of record of human rights violation, domestic abuse, whatever, I'm not going to partake in it. You're pretty much going to sit still on the beach and that's it. But why do we always come back to these like broad circuitous conversations about like our role in all of this when all like none of us own a sports team, none of us are billionaires. We can't really make decisions that do impact the world or other people. Like a, a lot of in a lot of ways we are kind of cogs in the machine and a lot of these choices are taken away from us. The choice to buy uh products that are ethically created and the choice to even participate in in our society which is a capitalistic society that right. bases its values off of how much money you can make um and so that's how hitler succeeded by everything you're saying by the way you, of course you can make a difference every single person makes a difference you make a choice every day what he really <laughs> threw the Hitler. He threw the Hitler at you, yeah. and it really yeah. asked him if he liked sports. Was the he brought up it, 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 it disoriented you. you. He I'm threw. It shouldn't disorient you. You just said that you are. You feel as though what you do doesn't can't make a difference. It's too overwhelming. You're only one person. You don't have the power. And I disagree. If 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 everyone thought the way you thought, then there'd be no progress ever made. You've got to start with you. How? And I don't mean you, Jessica, specifically. I mean all I of us. I actually think she's doing the opposite. I think she's only worrying about the difference that she can initiate and trying to live her Then best. I misheard. I apologize. I thought what you were saying is it was just unbelievable because... how that escalated to Hitler. It was unbelievable. <laughs> no, unbelievable. I, still, well, I, still well, not I try to bring that sure up to, to people say. so they understand what that means. The way he gained power and the way that the Holocaust started. But you see what happens when we no one stood up to him. That's Look, what David's I, trying to say. That's all I'm I, saying. Agreed. Agreed. But the part Because it, we were cogs in the machine. Okay. I, I don't... God. Man, that was... That Everyone stand up. You should all stand up and believe in something, believe in the right thing, and fight for it, even if you're going to lose. Huzzah. I didn't even get Huzzah. to finish my point. Huzzah. 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 That's Huzzah. a fine. Yeah. That's Huzzah. two fines right there. I mean, that's Fine. like $17. Words that man has fine. read but never heard aloud. It's 5 and $12 <laughs> just for the embarrassment. I mean. What? <laughs> Can we let Jess finish her point because it got muddied? My point was just going to be that there was only NF one NFL owner who was willing to offer Deshaun Watson $230 million of guaranteed money and give him this $1 million salary, which is, I think we can all deduce the reason that he chose the Browns. And I, I get frustrated every time we end up in this conversation about like, well, we all own iPhones, so who are we to judge? When it's like, well, I think in this case we can say like, that was a pretty shitty thing for Jimmy Haslam to do for the Browns. Uh, this is the question I ask about that. Was there only one owner who was willing to do that? Or were the Browns the ones who were creative enough to come up with that idea? Meaning, if someone had come to the Dolphins or to one of these other teams and said, hey, offer this, structure it this way, he'll say yes. Would, right. would, would the they Browns, say, no, that's the a Browns, bridge too far. The, the Browns were told no. Right. And got back in specifically because of the money that they put up. I know. My point is, if it turns into a bidding war, right, if anyone else knew... That not only am I, I mean, it did turn into a bidding war, and they had the winning hand, which was money. And my, my point is that we take a lot of heat off of individual decisions when we come back to like, well, we, we're all complicit in, in making immoral choices. And, and I think like this comes back down to an individual decision. Is it a decision that like five other owners probably would have made? Yeah, I mean, we don't we don't know that, but they didn't. Oh. So I, I guess like it, it just takes a lot of the pressure off of Jimmy Haslam in making this decision. No, well, I mean, I, 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 this whole conversation started because it was talking about Mike and his feelings of internal struggle about the moralities of the things that he attaches his fandom to. 
And so I I wasn't saying that, well, right. if I have an iPhone, it doesn't matter. If, like, what does it matter? I'm not saying that. I'm saying as individuals, when yeah. we talk about that moral struggle, that's uh, that's the thing. I say, it, it can be a constant thing. Well, this, it also circles back to not just being uh, an individual that's going through this moral struggle, but it's also an individual going through the moral struggle that has a platform that can be transparent with that moral struggle, thus leaving yourself susceptible to all sorts of hypocrisy. Right. But I think... Just because I am having a difficult time with the Deshaun Watson thing doesn't mean I will judge another Browns fan there you go. for still supporting the Browns. I think it's akin to, well, I'm an American, and then traveling overseas and having a European yell at you for the atrocities that your country committed. Right. There's only so much that you can do. You go to things for distractions, and if you moralize everything, you'll tie yourself up in a in a pretzel. For me, my journey, I'm go I guess I'm going through shit now. That I, I felt like the Deshaun Watson thing was too much for me to stand idly by for. And, and and that's the other side of it is is Mike is saying, hey, that's on y'all. I can't be a part of this anymore. I think the problem becomes when you but have— But he looks like he's virtue signaling when he does it, well, when he does it publicly. Right. And, and I'd understand Stugatz for button in. Man, you guys are ruining everything. Right. You guys are ruining— I want to talk about top wide receiver duos. <laughs> I mean, in the conversation. In the conversation. I have— uh, And Mike, did you just do it because of your platform? You mentioned No, no, platform. I was being honest. I, I just so happened to have a platform, and I'm also a very visible Browns fan. So naturally, people were asking me questions that most Browns fans that are in my mentions don't ever have to deal with, mm -hmm. especially uh, you know, on the public stage. I have often thought that Stu got his way and just totally disassociate yourself. Let me listen to R. Kelly's Chocolate Factory, guilt-free. Let me listen to Michael Jackson, guilt-free. Let me separate art from artists. If I just handle my business and if I just try my best, then what I enjoy shouldn't be a reflection on me. They are just outlets. But don't you think Stu Gott sleeps better than you do? Yeah, probably, but on account of the weed. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Those are the gummies. What are you talking about? No, nah, gummies. I like it's the It's much grass. easier for fans to be the way Stu Gott's is than to be the way Mike is. <laughs> and as owners, you count on there being more Stu Gott's mm -hmm. than Mike Ryan's. And there are. By a lot. By a lot. It's not even <laughs> close, actually. David, what is the movie you're reviewing for us this week? Uh, it's, it's Oscar week. Don't, can we talk about the Oscars, or did you yes. do that in a show no, with, with no, Adnan? No, no, did wait, Adnan wait. give you his picks? <laughs> wait, let's do this. Let's settle this on air here. Can we get can we get Adnan and Samson together to do a pod on the Oscars? They both love the Oscars, and Samson doesn't have a place. He wants to talk about the Oscars so Do they bad. love each other, though? That, I mean, well, I don't know. Can uh, we figure I that out? I do have a place. It's called Nothing Personal, where right, I'm going to no. do a full can, thing can tomorrow. We, but let me tell you something about Adnan. You, you put him up. This is what you do in your universe, and it drives me freaking crazy. You you somehow elevate people and give them an expertise in an area that they have zero experience in, but just because no. you anoint them, okay. they are zero experience. No, no. He's covered the Oscars multiple times. Oh, he yeah. could swim laps around you, knowing wow. knowledge yeah. Yeah. in the wow. history of it. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I mean, David, honestly, though, if you're going to say, boy. maybe you don't enjoy the way he breaks down movies, but if you're going to sit there and say he doesn't know what he's talking about Fair when shit. it comes to movies, you're just not listening to him because he knows his shit when it comes to movies. He knows Wow. as much as you he might, not be, he man. might swim those laps he, he not might, run them he might talk so fast that it's like you know you might not enjoy listening to it but he knows his shit okay David just here let me <laughs> you beat him you beat him you beat him let me, let me mic drop I, I want to broker this though let's get David I don't he's got a ton of Oscar thoughts Adnan loves talking about the Oscars we don't have room for David to talk as much about the Oscars here as he'd like he still loves this old antiquated thing that matters to people who like film, as I'm guessing most of America yawns at the idea of some of this stuff at this point, <laughs> winning awards for great movies. Oh, America doesn't yawn. Is what it, are you talking about? The NFL does an does an entire show just about giving away awards is it where people dress up like but, the Oscars. But is, is, is the Oscars what it was? Because I feel like David's hanging on to a piece of the past thinking that this is a time that matters I, in film. I think David would even admit no one cares about the Oscars. Not as many people care about the Oscars today as they did when we were growing up. And that's because the number of movie, the movies that are nominated are movies that most people aren't seeing. They're right. not huge commercial hits, but that doesn't mean they're bad movies. Mm -hmm. The problem is that we've gone as a society to the lowest common denominator of crap, where original ideas are far from uh, 
uh, common, movies like Coda or Belfast or movies that people are not interested in seeing, even though they're incredible movies, but they're going to go see Spider-Man No Way Home, and they're going to go see the Transformers Part 8 and Fast and the Furious Part 12. Well, no Way Home was amazing. Like, let's not go too far here with our criticisms. No Way Home was one of the greatest comic book movies ever. The complexity of building in all these different multiverses, Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield, spoiler alert, coming in and, and, and having real emotional connections to what happened to their characters. I, it hit me. It hit me. <laughs> I, I, I'm surprised it wasn't nominated because I've seen a couple of these nominated movies. And I'm like, that no, that's a no. King Richard was I not I an Oscar worthy movie. Samson, I do not understand King Richard. It feels, I, I mean, you tell me how you experienced mm -hmm. King Richard. This was an after school special. Mm -hmm. Like, how is this? This is some. This is politicking, man. It's politicking. We're, we're, it's people behind the scenes. We're gonna and, go to a. Yeah, we're gonna go to a place that's bad right now, Mike. Can we go there on this show? Because I mean, we've gone to a few Oscars, bad places. You went to Hitler. We're going to see something happen that was supposed to happen last year. Go back place. to last year with Chadwick Boseman. They changed the order of the Academy Awards to do Best Actor last in the show last year. And Anthony Hopkins won for The Father. And there was silence in the entire auditorium because it was supposed to go posthumously to Chadwick Boseman. And that was part of honoring an African-American actor who had died, who is such a great guy, died young and had a great performance which I didn't think was the best performance of the year, but I thought he was gonna win. This year, Will Smith is going to get his first Oscar for King Richard in a part that is not a top five Will Smith performance. Mm. Not even close. But he's going to win because the, the Academy is so, it's so necessary to honor an African-American actor this year because they've been so badly ignored over the years. The women, Jane Campion's gonna win Best Director this weekend because women have been so badly ignored by the I Academy. I mean, good movie? Average I movie? I want. I would say average movie. After School Special definitely hit home for me as far as a description. But let me ask you this, David. Why are you saying Will Smith's going to win when Denzel is also nominated for Macbeth? Uh, did you see Tragedy Macbeth? I did not. Denzel is amazing, right? It's That movie's hard to get through. Uh, no question about it because you're watching it with subtitles in black and white. Denzel's had his moment. Will Smith has not. Because the, uh, the industry is backing Will Smith here. Well, a reclamation project, uh, a, a good comeback story, his book, uh, you could tie it to agencies. We saw something like this with The Blind Side, where everyone's like, why the hell is The Blind Side getting all sorts of critical acclaim and 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 awards? You know how this praise? happens, right? Yes, there's behind-the-scenes politicking. You hire people to do this. Exactly. Money. Money. They pay money to to have as much for your consideration, which is a nice three letter three word sentence that means here's all this free shit, vote for our shit. Yeah, I plan on doing it's that what with Harvey our album. Weinstein did every is year. That's why Miramax kept winning Best Picture all the time, because of course that's part of the part of the budget when you put a movie mm -hmm. together is that you've got the marketing budget, and under the marketing budget is sort of the under the table budget. It's what you're going to do to get your movie into different. Uh, festivals and what you're going to do come award time because what awards they mean money for your producers for your investors and most movies do not make money i am ordering it i insist on metal arc media now funding a campaign of corruption to win a grammy to win Peola. a grammy I, to I mean, just finally simply, you're in my wheelhouse I, uh, yes. we will see if Stugatz <laughs> through cameos and everything that we crowdsource this I don't know how we're going to figure out did someone say corruption I, it seems to me that this would be very expensive to purchase a grammy but we're going to attempt to do it uh, David also I'm also insisting on this as part of the negotiations uh, let's get you on cinephile I want you guys to talk Oscars you care about it more than two, any two human beings I know okay your wish is my command because I'm a metal arc full timer now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, buddy. Eternals came, didn't go to the app; yeah. it went out in, into theaters, and that came out at the same I, time. I just, I'm amazed, just as a business model, cavernously, right? Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know how many people are watching much of what is going on with Disney, but for Disney to shake and tumble uh, from here to Beijing, theme parks, uh, tourist industry, everything that was happening during the pandemic, a classically American fairy tale company was getting hit from all sides during the pandemic, hemorrhaging money. Mm -hmm. 
And from within that and in the shadows of getting into the competition wars, they came in with some of their big things that have addicted our children to sugar and make them dance when Lin-Manuel Miranda does whatever it is you have to pay him to do after Hamilton. Yeah. And, and the, the Eternal, what happened with the Eternals might have stemmed from Scarlett Johansson's pending lawsuit, too. Oh, yeah, about, about the- Where she had bone carve outs for- the gross, yeah. She also did that at the very, spoiler alert, she also did that at the very end of the run of that character. Right. All of a sudden be like, you promised me box <laughs> yeah. office numbers. Right. So it was curious. I mean, I'm, I'm genuinely curious because you've had really good insight on Jimmy Butler over the years. Uh-huh. And last night- Things came to a head. Oh, wait, wait, what's going awesome. on there? Yeah. Yes, it was kind of awesome. And Chris. I loved it. <laughs> I think that the real story there was Spo, though. Like, I, I want to hear what Amin thinks of this. I think Spo's reaction, like, everything was kind of what we expected. Spo spiked a clipboard. That was the most out of character of all the people involved there. I think the real story is Caleb Martin just clapping all the oh, way yeah, through. Clap it off. Yeah. All right. Well, let's, let's <laughs> just for those who might not, let's say you just haven't seen what happened last mm-hmm. night. We got a good old fashioned heat spark on the bench. We've got. A lot of collisions of personalities, and this is a funny, viral moment that the Heat have been great all season. This will be them being talked about more than anything Anything they have done this season because it's just soap (laughs) opera and wonderful and silliness. And so here's a bucket of Heat shit that spilled on the floor yesterday. You've got in a huddle as... As Heat local television, a propaganda state outlet, doesn't report about any of this. Everyone is talking about, oh, shit, Haslam and Jimmy (laughs) Butler are mad at each other and Spoh's in the middle and a clipboard has been thrown. And so you thought that was bad enough as you're watching it. And then someone's got an angle behind the bench and you hear Spo, like this is the wired for sound you never get. You hear Spo say to Jimmy Butler... What? You want me to fight you? (laughs) And then you just realize right over his shoulder, oh, that's why Udonis has been on the payroll for five years. Because Spo doesn't care if his players like him. He's there to push him. Jimmy Butler's a star now, and he's kind of a, you know, everybody knows he's difficult. Like, And Jimmy Butler has been a handful for the Heat since he's been here. And, I mean, you can speak with some expertise to who Jimmy Butler is and how cool and rabid that confrontation between Haslam and Jimmy Butler were because there are a number of funny things here. Okay, so first things first, I think everyone is framing this as Jimmy versus UD. It's not. It's Jimmy and Spo. Spo is... Very particular about how he wants things done. And that sometimes breeds into a rigidity. Uh, I know this because I've talked to players over the years who, when they played for Spo, really resented it. And then after they left, you know, and they played for other guys, like, you know what? It was pretty good. Like, to have someone who was on top of it like that. Not that the way he handles it is right, but just the idea that you know this guy is prepared. Can I ask you guys a question? We have worn out the audience, worn out the audience with heat culture. What Amin is speaking to here, is this not the culture of Spo descended from Riley? Organizations win, masters control, we lost LeBron because we are the old school organization culture wins. When culture meets culture, when culture meets Jimmy Butler, I'm a star now. I'm in the commercials. I'm the jerk that Amin reported in practice emasculated Andrew Wiggins and Carl Anthony Towns and swept through NBA Twitter to the finals on, you know, rumored relationships that are unfair and all the bullshit that has made Jimmy Butler a pop star, Jimmy Butler more famous, and now Jagged Buzz saw Jimmy Butler being paid $50 million in three or four seasons, just like Tariq Hill against the salary cap. Now he's bucking up against the... The, the flames of our culture and Jimmy Butler winner guy. I, I don't think, yeah, I don't, I want to make it clear. I don't think it's Jimmy versus the culture. It's just a case of if we have a certain thing that we want to do, hey, let's try it this way. Spoh's not really that flexible. So, you know what? I will take some input on this one and let's try it your way. It's kind of like, no, shut the fuck up. We're going to do it my way. Sorry about that. Shut the hell, let me, three, two, one. Shut the hell up. We're going to do it my way. We're airing all of that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> 
Keep I feel it. like we're handling this story. The countdown oh, too. We have fun I mean, with this. Can I, can I finish the okay. goddamn explanation? This is a fun no. story. Keep it in yeah, I, can, I know. This what are we doing here? Time. I mean, come There's, on. Come on. Like, this is 82 fun. game regular season. They got in a little scrap on the sidelines, yeah. getting them ready for the postseason. Who cares? They're like, going to win the title. I like watching all the other players involved here because this is the fun thing because everyone knows, like, you know, there's a, they're going to get separated. But Kyle Lowry just pops right up and he just walks away. Kyle Lowry's like, I don't want any part of this. This, time is, out. this is uncomfortable. He stands up and walks. <laughs> out of the huddle and then Caleb Martin Stugatz is so right about this yeah, he best. starts trying to clap off the beef he's like yeah. we're good guys it's fine yeah. it's fine is that who you thought you'd be you were asking oh, people what, who would I be in there Caleb Martin. well th at first I thought it was Victor Oladipo who's just very interested he in it terrified. but standing behind yeah. somebody he's like watching from over someone's shoulder just kind of like this is cool I don't want to get physical here but I'm just going to watch but then yeah I think I am Caleb Martin I'd be like guys let's not fight we're good yeah. everything's okay clap it off then let me ask you a question you said that you read Spoh's lips saying, oh, you want to fight? Yeah, the internet did. Yeah. I read, he said, oh, I'm a failure now? <laughs> wow. All right, I got to review the tape. That's oh, so what that's that's what I saw when I yeah. read his lips. Like, oh, I'm, I'm a, it was kind of like an incredulous, like, oh, so you think I, I don't know what the hell I'm talking Spoh about. Oh, in his history, people said that that was uncharacteristic for Spo and actually throwing a clipboard and continuing while yeah. all eyes on him is, but he... He had the bump that was totally blown out of proportion, mm -hmm. but he also had something with Wade mm -hmm. on the sideline back in 2012. Uh, the bump, the bump was, was, it. Uh, was him bumping into LeBron, walking off the court 17 games into their time. Together. Yeah, that was more of a passive-aggressive LeBron thing than it had anything to do with Spo. I think really what last night was is, look, even when things were going well over here, Jimmy was difficult. Jimmy, in his history, has worn out his welcome everywhere he's gone. Sometimes even quicker than others. And it's starting to happen a little bit. I actually was really interested by a quote that I saw prior to that game mm -hmm. where Jimmy Butler sounded so different than I've ever heard him before, where he was basically like, yeah, if we win the title, so great. But if we don't, I'm all right. It was like a balanced mm -hmm. Jimmy Butler that I'd never seen before. And then we saw what happened last night. I just think he's an exhausting person to be around. Also, it's not based on just last night. It's the last couple of games. Apparently, like things haven't been great, and obviously they lost to the Sixers when nobody played. They lost to the Warriors last night. Nobody played. The Warriors are like 6-12 and 12 in their last 18. They lost They've to the Magic terrible. the night before. Yeah, They're Draymond Green had one of those moments in the post game where he was just calling everybody out on his team and they responded. They, they but they were the Warriors came in here as a double digit dog, didn't play anybody Nobody. last night. Didn't play Clay, didn't play Draymond, they didn't play Wiggins. They played Wiggins. Didn't, he was good. They, Wiggins yeah. has been awful. Oh By the way, he's been awful since the All Star game. Yeah. But he's been could, awful. And he cooked Jimmy Butler at the end and yes. what was a series of daggers, but that was one of the daggers. But I mean they you could have told me Seth was playing yesterday with how they were shooting. Please we can talk about this because this is the fun story of the day. And the Celtics, I think, are like twenty three and four or something in I'm their last. I'm afraid of them now. Twenty yeah, seven. Yeah, yeah, they really the, good. The, the Celtics are uh, beating everybody by twenty and beating top six seeds by twenty, and uh, they they look formidable. And it's funny to see them go from we were mocking them because they were like twenty two and twenty three at some point. Or they were like at five hundred, mocking them a team meeting seven games in where Marcus Smart is yelling about things. <laughs> and now it's the Heat's turn. They've been the number one seed the entire season. They've been uh, an overachiever all season, pushing like pushing pedal to metal through this shit, through the pandemic, being a winning organization, pulling awkward clapping Caleb Martin out of nowhere and. I missed Gabe Vincent last night. I was mad at Matt, at Struess. I'm mad at Struess. Got make something because I want these guys. He's made plenty. I, I, mean, I know, but I want it. I was I was mad. Max Struess they, alone. They've man. lost. They've lost two games here. Two regular season games against real just broken teams. You're right. getting beaten by George Niang. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And, and now it's coming apart at the seams and it feels good, Mike. I need you to tell me that it feels good to have this this bustle on the sidelines that there's old UD. I've got Barry Jackson of the Miami Herald explaining to his audience what an OG is. <laughs> <laughs> I think ultimately it's a it's a good thing, but there, there's I some good will come of it, I guess. But that's a hugely bad look. It's bad luck to have tensions. It was boil embarrassing. Over that much. Yeah. And yeah. and you know what was funny? I, I that it lasted so long. So long. Mm -hmm. Oh, the entire like to the point where you see Kyle Lowry at the end going to the ref like. 
I think we need another one. Yeah. Yes. Like, they're, they're sk- well, six, Snow was like, all right, yeah, we're here now. One. We're all yes. embarrassed. I'll lean in. <laughs> I was <laughs> identifying with, <laughs> I was identifying with Spoke. He's all right, I'm this mad now. You happy? You got me this mad. He spiked it at him. It wasn't just a spike. He was like, I'm trying to throw this at you. Two hands. Okay, but we we skipped over something. I mean, just said something I haven't heard anywhere. It does matter. I read his lips and it sounded like he was saying, what? You want to fucking fight me now? Spo- <laughs> but, but I'm telling you, if you look, we can play a game right now. The lips look the same on fight you and failure. Watch my lips. Well, I'm going to turn off my mic. No, you I guys just look yeah, at I like the audio. I'm going to send one of these two. Like the and I want you guys to tell me if I'm go. saying fight you yeah, yeah. or failure. Okay. All right? Yeah, yeah. No, he said failure that time. Failure. That he was failure. Again. I can confirm. I can do it confirm. Yeah. That was failure. This is your why are your ideas always so bad for the podcast? <laughs> 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 is this a character you have now? Why does he have an ownership of a highlight team? Here we go. Do it again. No. Fight you. Fight that you. Was fight, or maybe yeah. you can't tell. Yeah. Oh yeah. my God! We got to the bottom of it. <laughs> you can't tell. tell. I mean, bottom, bottom I, I mean threw out a theory I've heard from no one. You investigated by being confused by the internet. You did a terrible audio bit <laughs> investigation closed. <laughs> maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> So tell me what the fuck Hitler would have done that. No, no, no. <laughs> so, no. no. We need to talk about that no. a little bit. No, yeah, 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 we know. No. 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 Maybe no. they even got caught up in the no. air, but that so, was a no. very no. odd no. place to be. No. Dodgers, Dodgers. No. I did a spit take. Why did he do that to Jess? Why, did, why would you do that to anybody? It was he un- misunderstood, he said. I mean, no, just- I'm really, I'm like genuinely, I've been rattled for the last like 45 minutes. I don't know what happened there. I need to like go back and listen to it. I mean, I I don't I don't think I said anything anti-Semitic. I don't know. No, 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 no. He didn't mean it he like didn't. that. He didn't mean it like that. He, he meant it in the sense that like when good people go silent, that's how dictators happen he was saying you can make a difference one person can make a difference there's so many other dictators he could have gone with he was trying to encourage you by making a hitler comparison i don't think he was encouraging me no he said like don't sell yourself short jess you can make a difference just look at hitler yeah Can, (laughs) can we just move the conversation please back to safer places and safer spaces. All right, I'll do it again. Everyone wants no, my no, lips. No, no, no. You don't have to. Yeah, I'm let's not... move it to a safer discussion. Tyreek Hill? No, I don't want to go back there. <laughs> <laughs> we'll Steve do Martin's that. Strokes. Wide receiver duos? I mean. <laughs> did you just yeah. snort Steve Martin was a prop comic? I mean. <laughs> I did. Yeah, you can't make fun of anybody for anything that comes out of their body. I, I... saw a spit take. <laughs> <laughs> it's fair. First spit take in the uh, sure in the history is. of the show. Um, and uh, don't forget King uh, Ken Obergefeld. That that snort. Yes. That, you gotta get the sound for that, that one. That Mike. was a that was a snort. Uh, but this is. Uh, I hope that they have the video of this. The first spit take in show history because Mike uh, slalom coursed through all of his moralities and then at the end put his fandom up for sale again. And, uh, you know, flirted with the Chargers, who are inviting, if you want to spend the next 10 years uh, rooting for a stallion who's going to come out on a white horse and never disappoint you. Was it because they didn't have an arrest in five, five years? years. Now? Yes. <laughs> I'm just saying, I, I, he's also investing in A. Herbert. I, I don't really know you at all. You're sort of a robo quarterback personality. Amazing. Rides in on a white horse. And please don't get in trouble. Please don't make me make any moral choices. If you're picking a pro football team based off of moralities, number one, don't, because you're going to tie yourself into a pretzel. They're the ones that have the best record from a moral standpoint. The best of the worst. <laughs> it's just, I, I'm, I, it's tiring. And I have to look at pro football fandom totally differently now. I, I just, or maybe I just say bleep it. And I don't care about what my previous takes were. I'm just going to lean into, this thing brings me joy. I don't have to answer to you. I just can't I would go with bleep it, Mike. I, okay, you say that, though, well, Stugatz. Chris Cody actually told me something interesting He's during the break. He's a Browns fan, Dan. Uh, Chris Cody is like, well, you felt this way, but did you feel this way because there's a bit of grandstanding? Because you have the platform, did the access to the platform 
helps shape your opinion. And I have to be honest with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like I have to hold myself to a higher standard because of the platform afforded to me. Yeah, I do. Uh, so I can fix your problem then. Mike, you're fired. <laughs> I don't think you can do that. Uh, I don't think you can. No, it's cool, you though. But you want yeah. him to just go be a fan. It was kind of cool, though. Like, you I'll fix good? the problem no, for I, you. I love yeah. this job more than I love the Browns. Mm -hmm. This must be so wearying to our audience. Like, they, the audience that's been with us since the beginning must be laughing at all of us. Oh, really, woke show? It hurts to be a sports fan now. No. Really? Really? It hurts the too much? Ever. It, it, what happens when you, you publicly moralize, though? It, what happened to but Pat Oswalt? But you didn't have to. You guys yelled. Oh, no, yeah. but, but but help me with this though, Mike, because God knows you guys have heard the Goodell show for 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 ten, forty years. Because I yell about Goodell all the time, but you've seen what's happened around here. Like he, I told you they shouldn't be in the morality business, but we we let him into the charge. How do, you, how do you get Amer out of it? America's most popular sport got so much more popular the moment that he started punishing Chris Henry's for ending up behind bars. Like when he en went off the field, that we would now expect him. Hey, why didn't you do anything with Tyreek Hill? Like the the details on that seem pretty awful. Why didn't Tyreek Hill miss games? I told you they weren't qualified for that business, and you were always pushing back on me on, like, well, okay. But what are they and, supposed to do, Dan? They're supposed to just— well, No, they went in like they're going to be the church. They're going to be America's most popular sport, conservative. They're going to punish the kneeling black guy, and they're going to rise up all these billionaires, and they're going to rule sports by making these guys who are always misbehaving and making the league good, look bad, punishing them and over-punishing them so we can run a clean league taking $5 million of taxpayer money to honor the military on Sunday so we could look— He's Throwing a way. lot at you right well, now. I'm just, I'm just. This is my question. He's like, oh, well, they got into the morality business. What's the alternative when you have such high profile? Right. Just let it slide. You, well, you right. can't just let it. Everyone slide. Everyone that's critical of it also doesn't really know what punishments should be. It's a blissful existence of the critic too, because. If Dan were to come at Roger Goodell directly and say, "Why didn't you do anything about Tyreek Hill?" If I'm Roger Goodell, I'd be like, "Please." Educate me on all the information that your investigation, Dan Lebetard, led you to believe that I should punish Tyreek Hill more. Because I feel like I have access to all the information. Information that's not public. Information direct from law enforcement investigation units. But we can just go in front of a microphone, espouse a generally popular take that, man, Roger Goodell failed here. It's it's not a great position for Roger Goodell, and I can't believe I'm put in the position to defend him twice this week. He's earning that fifty million dollar a year salary, one Lebetard rant at a time. But, you, but <laughs> if we're gonna do this, though, if we're gonna sit here and talk legitimately about, I have to be less of a sports fan if I have to continually make these moral choices about Deshaun Watsons and Tyree Kills, and. And and Mike Ryan's viewpoints are going to ruin the way that Stugatz has always watched sports. No, they won't. And we're going to be the show that's too woke as, you know, medias take sides and platforms You're take sides. You're weaponizing woke like Clay Travis. Stop doing that. No, but I'm we're telling trying you. trying our best. I'm t what I'm telling you is I'm not, I don't. I'm not going to be smeared by woke as if it's a bad thing. Like I, you see what's happening in this country and all over the world. Like we're kind of in a fight. Like it's not about being objective anymore. We've taken a side against some things and you can think that checks certain boxes and sports has always been the escape for this show. And this platform has always been, it runs high and low and what felt good yesterday about the heat was that was fun. The Dolphins, goddamn, you mattered for the first time. You won a day for the first time in how long? Miami won a day. My, but the Miami Dolphins won a day, and it felt good to be a sports fan for a minute. And then we were reminded, oh, look what Tyreek brings into the huddle with him. Did we forget? Oh, fandom, that's where it catches you, right in the heart, and, it, and you'll give it the wallet the rest of your life. All of it. And you'll raise your children on it. 
And they're counting on it, moms, because this maw is going to need meat in a few years when we realize that we've concussed and killed too many of these people. But, Dan, we do this for a living. All fans see is that's their escape, that's their entertainment, that's their feel-good. All they saw yesterday was, wow, Not most uh, fans, Dan, so, okay. most fans, there are I'm degrees. sorry. To God's, there right. are degrees. Like, you're telling me that we're totally in the minority by being conflicted you're about this. You're in the this. vast minority, the minority yes. Dan, well, we yes. do. I think it's a Dolphin good fans celebrated yesterday, yeah. yes. It's, it's a good point that we have to talk about this. A lot of fans can just be a Dolphins fan and like yeah. they're not going to be having a lot of these Correct. conversations so they can just push yep. through no a few weeks from know. now, a yeah. few weeks around, no one maybe will be talking about the, all this. So I'm just saying it's easier for a casual, like we have to sit here and talk about this. What I am telling you is, do you realize do yesterday, yester what yesterday happened in Miami sports one day is as close to how it felt when LeBron, Dwayne, and Bosch were here together at in the morning and at night. Oh, yeah. The team's fighting on the sideline. It matters. And over here in the morning, I'm excited about the Dolphins for the first time in 20 years. They've got a game breaker. They've never got one of those. They're building around Tua. I can't enjoy it for five minutes before all of a sudden I'm I'm met with the day's first moral conundrum. And all the cops at the cafe are talking about Miguel Rojas. We're Everyone's excited now. about Law, the Marlins suddenly. Law and Order uh, episode. You got a Sweet 16 game coming up. Or 30 <laughs> no, no, right. <laughs> it's unbelievable. What is happening? We're feeling like winners. <laughs> ben Chirot's homecoming in Montreal wow, tonight. Puck God. drops at 7. <laughs> I still oh, yeah. don't know if I'm pronouncing his time, name right. But Chirot. I want, I want, ah, it's a fine. <laughs> I want you to see what's happening the in America. We are in lawless Florida, in uh, the the tip of the Florida Peninsula, and uh, we are corrupt. I mean, told you he sees all the uh, the military around here. We're in the middle of a state of emergency. There's a curfew here. There's a curfew because they're saying the black people are partying too much, and they're saying it's too dangerous. And Just on the weekends, right? And, and, and well, hold on a second. Can, can, you ex can you explain the curfew to Amin? Because he's very concerned. He's not certain. Does he have to be in his hotel by midnight? Like, how does this work? I got to go to dinner, yes. and the dinner is not in Miami Beach. You've got to be back here before midnight. I ha like, are they barricading like in the movies? It's like oh no, you, I w it's not wise at this point. My right. minority friends are not driving around. The police, I'm not driving. The police are not hostile. The police, but they will be shortly because it's it's about. They're already closing down the parking down here. They do yeah. this anytime it gets a little too black around here. Mm. Then it becomes too unruly. It's spring break, but. There might be, they are confiscating weapons around here. There've been like a hundred confiscations of weapons. So that we're in the middle of a, it's a, it's been declared a state emergency. Right, right. You And you were scared walking around because you're seeing uh, semi-automatic weapons. I, I just figured like what problems are happening that regular guns can't solve. Like the cop looked at his regular handgun and was like, nah, this ain't enough. Threw it out goes, nah, this is more like it here, yeah. Come on, they're all playing Call of Duty out here. Now, I look, hey, this is my Spring thing. Spring break, man. I'm just like, I, I get it. I shouldn't be out in the street. Oh, look, I've lived through curfew, real ass curfew. AK-47 in your face curfew. Done that. Not fun. I just find it hard to believe that like an American city would actually, actually do a curfew if it weren't like Ferguson in Missouri. Like, that was, like, real-ass curfew. This, I can't believe it, because some kids are well, a little you, unruly. You, you say that, though, and I ask you, as being in the hotel here, where this has happened now a couple of times, when it gets crazy, crazy at the end of the pandemic, uh, there's been a rush after gunshots through the kitchen of this hotel because of the number of people out there and because bad things have happened out there over the last couple of years. Right outside our doors, as if you're listening to Because Miami with Billy Corbin, you know that politicians are trying to actively, corruptively mm -hmm. uh, blight this area and police it poorly, police it over police it mm -hmm. in times like this and under police it in other times. As I'm talking to the police officers about Miguel Rojas during a super exciting time <laughs> yeah. in Miami sports. I have a theory. Do you think that the Heat saw the news, the Dolphins finally in the news for something uh, positive yesterday? So they're like, you know what? We got to make a commotion. Let's get in, in a fight. Game. Like they know yeah. that, that, that this, this, home court, steal the headlines. Yeah. Yeah. That this town is secretly still a football town. The only reason why the Heat have been the Let's thing. Let's show them. Is because the Dolphins have been so inept, but if they ever were to rise up and be just somewhat competent, that is a threat to. I like Maybe this Spo idea. Maybe Spo was saying "fuck the Dolphins." Let me look at that. Wow. Let me look at that. 
tape again. Turn off your mic. Turn off your mic. Off. Yeah. Before you do, mark that. Thank you. Well, your mic was your on. Your mic was on. Okay, you are so incompetent. <laughs> Roy! Um, you know why? Because I was talking. All right. You're so talking, incompetent. It's, it's really is flabbergasting. I don't know why we gave you a highlight team. <laughs> Jessica, I don't feel like you've been... I was going to say, didn't I, he buy it? I, I, however it is you got it. I don't know... <laughs> That you've been the same since no, uh, I, since what I happened with David I Sampson. Still don't and know what happened. So can we clarify for the mm. audience so they don't believe that anyone around here was making Hitler jokes because that seems stupid and reckless. No one was doing that. that I'd be very okay, upset if they did. Okay, yes. just to be clear, though, it seems like in the middle of our conversation, as you're telling me I'm weaponizing woke, in the middle of our conversation, you're worried about what happened with Samson could be misinterpreted. And I'm asking you, how could that be misinterpreted? I think it was misinterpreted when Samson then replied with some comparison to Hitler. <laughs> and I need to re-listen to it to figure out what exactly happened there. Um, I, I think he was maybe making a, a confused, like, ideological comparison. I'm telling you, he was trying to support you. It was awkward. He was. He was, but he was trying to support you. That's what he was doing. I hope so. I'm telling you he was. But this seems like the perfect punctuation to a segment. I hope. I, I, <laughs> a, <laughs> you were wrong. 